Hello and welcome to our presentation today. I'm Louise Anderson and I work at the Veterinary Clinical Skills Department of the School of One Health Biodiversity and Veterinary Medicine and my background is small animal clinical practice. And I'm Katie Denham. My background is in dairy cattle medicine and preventive medicine and I work in the farm animal division um, at the vet school. And our other colleague, uh, Kim Hamer, who's not with us today, is a sheep specialist. So you'll see throughout this presentation that food is a recurring theme. So I apologize in advance for all the food references. Um, so why are we here today? Well, we found that during the pandemic, there wasn't really much of an appetite for us to discuss our symposium. Um, which was a large scale face to face collaborative event, which happened just before the first lockdown. And I mean, just before, about a week before. Um, but what we found with the themes and the sub themes of this conference aligned so much with what we were trying to achieve in terms of transferable skills and graduate attributes for our veterinary clinical phase cohort. We felt that now restrictions are easing and we're all readjusting to the new normal. We felt that now might be the ideal time to share our experiences of running this event with you. We thought it might be helpful to give you a bit of background about the BVMS um, veterinary programme. So our curriculum, it's a five year course delivered in three phases. So we have foundation phase, which are years one to two, clinical phase for years three to four and then professional phase in the final year and in final year our um, intended learning outcomes are mapped to the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons day one competencies. In years one to four the course is divided into modules which mostly run over four weeks and we have a spiral curriculum where the topics and themes are revisited throughout the course the aim being to deepen knowledge and understanding. But what we found um, in professional phase in final year is that clinicians were finding there were significant gaps in the practical application of knowledge in some really important areas. And one of those areas um, was parasitology. So, and we, we were finding that this is applying to all the key species. So to address this, a decision was made to introduce a one day parasite symposium for the clinical phase, that's the third and fourth year students. So where to start with a timetable, of course, and we wanted to try and develop particular graduate attributes with the focus on our students becoming independent and critical thinkers, effective communicators and experienced collaborators. So with this objective in mind, we started with the timetable and worked backwards from there. We invited two keynote speakers to kick the day off. One lecture was given by Christina Nowler, who has a parasitology background and runs the university's online master's program in One Health. And we also invited Rob Kelly, who's currently working at the Edinburgh Vet School, whose research background is in tropical parasites and uh, zoonotic diseases of cattle. And so we asked him to give the worldview lecture. And then we scheduled eight workshops for um, small groups of students between 10 and 30 students in the morning and in the afternoon, which they could sign up to on a first come first serve basis. And we factored in some time for viewing of posters, which we'll come back to. And then we wanted to add a fun creative element. And after quite a bit of deliberation, we know that food is generally a great way to get vet students to attend anything. So we decided to add a parasite bake-off competition. So to the posters, at the vet school, we love an animal related acronym. And in each of our modules, we have a continuous assessment task or CAT task for short. Um, so what we tried to do here was combine the third and fourth year CAT tasks into a poster task, which the third years created in small groups and the fourth years assessed in small groups. Um, and the fourth years were given a rubric marking system to do the assessments. There are about five or six students in each group and each poster topic had a member of supervising staff <clears throat> to oversee the project. The long term plan was to hold this symposium annually so that students had an opportunity 
to both create a poster and then subsequently to offer formative feedback on a poster. And we made it a competition with prizes for the third and fourth year students involved in creating the top two posters, which you see here. The downside of this was, was that there was a very tight turnaround time, about two weeks to create the initial posters, five days for the fourth years and supervisors to critique the posters, a further five days for the third years to make corrections, and then only a week for printing. And it was a bit of a logistical nightmare with juggling Moodle submissions, library modifications, and our other teaching commitments. But once they were up in the MSB, which is our social space at Garscube, we were really happy. They looked really great, and our visitors were very complimentary about the overall quality, especially the winning entry, which you can see pictured here. So the whole process was an exercise in collaboration. For example, the clinical staff helped with the poster supervision, and we had a lot of help from admin and library staff when it came to the practicalities of getting the posters printed. And unwittingly, we promoted many of the conferences, this conference's sub themes. For example, many aspects of workplace learning were encouraged within the poster task, with self-directed research being in integral to the task, in addition to client and peer communication skill development. We were trying to widen participation by delivering material in different ways with workshops, live keynote face-to-face -face lectures, and we attempted a blended approach with live streaming. Students could choose which work workshops to attend, and the more creatively minded students were encouraged to participate in the poster creation and with the Bake Off. We were working in partnership with specialists from further education, industry and veterinary practices for lectures and workshops. And it, when, came, when it came to skills development, we aimed to promote skills in evidence-based research, peer tuition, peer assessment, and written and verbal communication skills. And we were also trying to demonstrate to students that a, a really good workplace culture at its best is one of collaboration and teamwork. So why did we choose a Bake Off? Well, um, it was mentioned already about food, um, but we found that um, in previous similar symposiums, um, we had issues with student engagement. So um, we tried to pique um, student and staff interest with food. Um, also on, on, at Garth Cube, we have an event called Feel Good February, which is a month long wellbeing event. So we wanted to give the students something fun and creative to do. So I'm going to show you some images of the cakes that were made, um, but I'm also going to give you a bit of a trigger warning um, because some of the cakes, um, some folk might find a little bit tasteless. <laughs> and um, basically, um, some viewers may find the following, following images of cakes potentially distressing. So here we are. <laughs> so we had some inventive, hilarious and thoroughly disgusting entries. Um, and um, great involvement from students and staff alike and lots and lots of laughs. Um, so we've got a, 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 um, a rabbit at the top left with fly strike. Um, in the middle, we've got a wonderful liver with liver fluke and um, a very sick cow in the middle. And um, on, the, on the bottom right there, you see a, a very well fed engorged tick. And uh, we have our very own Paul Hollywood here. Um, this is my colleague, Paul Einan, um, and he was one of our, our cake judges. And um, we did have criteria for the cakes. We had They had to be clinically accurate. Um, they had to have educational value. And of course, they had to taste really good. So the tick um, was the winning entry. It looked unbelievably realistic and um, it was blood filled um, on dissection, um, which was, was jam and chocolate. So it won on appearance, taste and educational value. So what did we learn? Um, and what would we do differently next time? Well, the poster practicalities, as, as Katie's already mentioned, um, there was a really tight turnaround. So I think we'd, we'd look at that in the future. And um, we found sort of perennial problem of poor citation technique and, and poor 
um, choice of, of, of literature um, with the students and we do give them a lot of help with that but there's, there's certainly room for improvement. Um, the lecture attendance wasn't great but um, I think from lockdown we're, we're much better at that now and it would give us more scope um, for, um, for speakers as well um, using a blended approach. The Bake Off was great but um, we could certainly look at other um, creative alternatives, um, such as models. We've got a lot of avid knitters and, and crocheters in the, the cohort. And um, we are a little bit aware of, of, of costs potentially being an issue with this. So we would try to make it as inclusive as possible. We could certainly have done with more help on the day. So I think we'd, we'd definitely get some final year students to, to help us. We could certainly have done with taking more photos and maybe using social media a little bit more. And um, with this event, we didn't do any formal evaluation. We had a lot of, of um, verbal feedback on the day, really positive feedback. But I think next time we try and do something a bit more formal with something like a Mentimeter survey, um, really just to, to assess um, how, how we actually did on the day. So hopefully you've not been too traumatized by our cake pictures and we hope you've enjoyed uh, getting a little taste of what we get up to at Gars Cube. Thanks for listening and please feel free to get in touch if you have any questions.